Yeah, it's just, and it, it, and it makes me upset at the other people too. It's like, you, you, you guys might actually be worse because you, they think, he thinks that you're good friends, but you don't like him and you keep inviting him out. So you might be worse than him. At mm. least he's oblivious and he's a idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys keep inviting him. In five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I am your host, David So, and we have our reoccurring host, Ed Park VP. What's up, guys? Everybody. So, you catching up on anything? Any movies? I haven't seen shit. I haven't really? seen Dick. <laughs> I, I usually watch what, at least like two or three movies a week. Yeah. I haven't been able to watch anything in like in three weeks. It's been kind of weird. Uh, I did start, there's a, a John Boyega and, um, Jamie Foxx movie on Netflix. They clone Tyrone. Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I saw the first 10 minutes I had to turn off because the movers were coming in. Yeah. From the first 10 minutes, looks pretty fucking good. Okay. So I'm excited to 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 watch that. It's like yeah. a sci-fi thriller type of deal. I saw Elemental, the new Pixar film. So that's, okay, so Elemental's fascinating, right? Because they did no promo for this mm -hmm. at all whatsoever. The promo was ass, dude. The marketing was shit. What happened with that? Like, Disney shit the bed with the marketing. Like the one marketing I saw was somebody recording the theater screen, right? And this is from the official Pixar Twitter, by the way. They're showing someone bootlegging the movie. But then when that little kid, the character, did you see it? I only the, saw the trailer. Uh, well, there's a, there's a kid that is a plant kid. And then when the text says, every time this guy comes on screen and then the theater cheers, right? And it sounded so fake. It was like a, it was like a, a staged, like screening of people like cheering for this guy. Because when you hell? watch the movie, he's fucking nobody. Like nobody gives a shit about this kid. But what the thing, happened? right? The movie itself is awesome. It's amazing. It's directed by the Korean American dude Peter Son. Mm. Um, he's the guy that they modeled Russell after. So, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So, um. He wrote the movie based off his parents' like immigrant experience and his growing up in America with immigrant Korean parents. So when you see the Fire Clan, it's it's kind of an amalgamation of a lot of Asian like mm -hmm. cultures, but it's very very Korean. Of course, yeah, it's very angry Korean. all the time. Yeah, they're angry, and then they they have these little nuances that as a Korean, like you 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 really relate to it. Other than that, yeah, the fucking marketing was such shit that um, people assumed it was going to bomb because it, it didn't do well the opening weekend. It was mm -hmm. like their lowest opening weekend ever for Pixar. Yeah. But after a few weeks, it was Disney's highest rating animated film since, uh, I mean, grossing animated film since Frozen 2. Really? Yeah. So over time, word of mouth, people kept saying, no, this movie is actually good. And then See, people went out and started seeing it. pretty fucking awesome because I think I'm getting really tired of films that are doing well just because the marketing is great, right? Yeah. So pe almost people are kind of forced into a narrative to like a film just because, you know, marketing did their job, yeah. right? So when you hear about films that do well simply on its merit, it's pretty amazing. It's the same thing that happened with everything everywhere all at once, mm -hmm. right? Nobody really was talking about it until they actually went to the theater to go see it. Yeah. And then because of word of mouth. And, and I feel that obviously marketing has existed for films for a very long time, but it's become very advanced now. Um, but now when you, when, you, when you see a film do well that supposedly is supposed to fail simply because people enjoy it, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's a, the beauty of like cinema culture coming back since the pandemic. Because it doing that well, because think about it, Frozen had a lot of marketing behind it. Yeah. Specifically Frozen 2. Mm -hmm. It had so much marketing. Frozen 2, Frozen the original one, apparently because uh, Mariel used to work for Disney, uh, Disney actually didn't expect it to do well at all. Yeah. They were actually shocked. So when this happened, everybody was scrambling to figure out why. They were like, what the fuck? This is like the biggest thing that we've made ever. Yeah. And so when Frozen 1 blew the fuck up, I, I guess like internally they were trying to figure out this algorithm. Like, okay, what <laughs> about this was so amazing that people enjoyed so much? Yeah. And so obviously Frozen 2 became a hit, but there was so much marketing behind it and it already had a successful hit from the first one. Yeah. So to hear Elemental 
kind of had that same amount of success and still nobody talked about it, which is fascinating. Yeah, yeah. That it's doing, that it did that well and I haven't heard a single thing about it. Dude, um, Miyazaki's new film, it's his last film. He's retiring for good. Finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. After, after he said he was gonna retire. Yeah. But the crazy thing is in Japan, they spent zero dollars marketing. No commercial, no ads, nothing, right? Just the word that this is Miyazaki's last film and it broke Japan's box office records. That's amazing. Yeah, recently. So they're planning on releasing it later in America, but I can't see how without any marketing in the US to say this is Miyazaki's last film, <laughs> to get people to go watch it. That was the same thing with uh, Suzume. So when I saw it, I was actually was no, hardly anybody in the theater. But mm -hmm. when you look at the box office numbers, yeah. it did 300 million plus. Damn, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Yeah. That means internationally it did well, in Japan it did really, really fucking yeah, well. Yeah. So like anime is such a big thing in Japan, it's unreal. Like when we went to the theater there, uh, walking by, I didn't go inside, but half the posters are actually anime films. Yeah. Like half the theaters, half the films that's on there on the big screen is anime. Anime, yeah. Fucking blew my mind. So it's actually something that's not just like a niche thing that people kind of picked up here, picked up on here in America. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty consistent in Japan. Like it's a part of everything. You see it in posters, you see it on subways, you see Pokemon fucking everywhere. Yeah. As racist as that sounds, <laughs> like you see Pokemon everywhere in Japan. Hey, speaking of anime movies, so the the first slam dunk is coming out in America this weekend. So I'm planning to watch that. Slam Dunk is Japanese though, right? Japanese, yeah. See, I didn't know that as a kid. Real? Oh, cause you only saw the mana check, yeah, the, the Korean, Korean mana, mana check. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was Korean. <laughs> <laughs> of That's course. because with the Korean mana, if you realize, they actually edit it to make it look less Japanese. Cause you know how there's like moments where they do really funny chibi shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a part when he's trying to distract one of the guys and he has a Japanese flags. But in the Korean mana, they just black that out. It's just white flags. That's so fucking <laughs> funny, dude. That's so That's fucking why, funny. Yeah. I mean, I've I've definitely it's hard to watch American animation or other animation outside of Japanese 2D stuff mm -hmm. because it's just that much better. Mm -hmm. You know, specifically just how they shade and color things too. Yeah. It's so different. And even just the composition is better. So if you look at American anime, it's actually Korean animated. Yeah. So there's a new Superman show, right? On HBO Max, or it's just called Max now. Mm -hmm. And it's the anime Superman. It's Korean animated. Oh, really? Yeah, but, and then he made Lois Lane Korean. Why? I don't know, but that's literally, I haven't seen the show, but then just on the Twitter feed was Lois Lane is Korean. The only two Asian people that's mad about representation. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking dare you? Oh my God. Speaking, well, change her name. Yeah. Why is it Lois Lane? It should be Lois Rain. <laughs> <laughs> I guess her dad was in the military. Yeah. But speaking of representation, Oppenheimer, which I saw last week and is amazing. We'll talk about it sometime. But if you're on, you know, the social space and what everyone's talking about because of the Barbenheimer, you know, hype, all of that, you know, originally, there was like this immense popularity with, hey, we're gonna go see both, yeah. right? Instead of them competing against each other. Cause the whole thing with it coming out on the same day is Warner Brothers taking revenge on Christopher Nolan for leaving their studio. Mm. Nolan was so pissed at what, how they marketed and released Tenet and it being one of his worst uh, grossing films he, and the way they did it in the pandemic that he was like, you know what, I'm, I'm leaving. And he went to Universal and made this. So Warner Brothers <laughs> purposely released on the first day. On, I mean, on the same day. Well, you know, contrary to that, there was an overall positive vibe of, hey, we're all gonna see both. And then the Bob and Heidmer memes and all of that, right? But now that people have seen it, now you're seeing the extremes of both sides talking shit about it. So you have like conservative, like far right, saying how, how Barbie is like the fall of our civilization <laughs> and shit. Was and that like, fucking, uh, what's his name? Ben Shapiro. Oh yeah, did Ben Shapiro do a review on it? Yeah, and he like, just- He always says, does reviews on pop culture stuff, which is like the funniest thing. And just shits on it. Like, it's like, 
Who cares what you think? Yeah. <laughs> like you're talking about uh, uh, hip hop is actually, uh, I, I, I'm a classical jazz musician. So oh, I, I play the violin, so I actually know a lot about music. <laughs> and um, what, what hip hop is, it's just, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's not music. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not music. I, 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 I wholly disagree. And uh, logically, it doesn't even make sense. He's like, are you being a contrarian <laughs> or are you just a fucking dork? He's a you know? dork. It's yeah. like, that's the dorkiest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Did you see him? Like, because there was, you know, a Home Depot or Lowe's like backlash or some shit. And so he's like, you know, as a man, and I'm going to support, you know, like Lowe's or whatever. So he goes to Lowe's and he buys one two by four. What are you going to do with a piece of wood, dude? <laughs> Just the one plank. It's like, go and support your local hardware store. What the fuck? the fuck are you talking about, dude? Let me so, tell you something here, Ben this, Shapiro. You look like you close the door with your hips, you little yeah. bitch. Shut the, <laughs> shut the, shut the fuck up, dude. I'm so, here at uh, Home Depot, and guess what? I, th- 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 support America, I bought one two by four. Yeah. For what? What are you going to do with it, you fucking dweeb? And then, <laughs> then this past week, I guess he burned a bunch of Barbie dolls. Why? Why? Why do you why do you have Barbie dolls? You went and bought Barbie dolls or are they your kids Barbie dolls? You bought what? well you already just supported Barbie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dumbass. Well, the other side of that too with the far left are people complaining that Oppenheimer was a bunch of white people and that there were no Japanese people in it. Now I got to ask, did you Wait, actually Is that what that the, the drop because I didn't see it? Uh-huh. I didn't see that's that's what it's about. But that's kind of Weird because it's about the um, atom bomb, <laughs> so it's not like, Hiroshima. So why it's would there be a lot of Japanese people built there? It. Exactly. It's about the Manhattan Project in New Mexico. Yeah. No. So the, I didn't. I, I maybe I was the only one. I didn't expect to see any Japanese people. It's a historical film in America. What, 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 what do they want to see? A bunch of Japanese people getting bombed? Yes. Like, that's what I was surprised by. So I even put up a poll, like, so 40% of people actually expected to see people get blown to smithereens. Why? That's not what the movie's it's about. about. Yeah. It's like, you're, so you're going to have the first two films be like this scientific, like, genius thing of a group of, like, incredible, like, America's best, who, by the way, I guess seven of eight of the top scientists there were Jews, mm. you know? And then people were complaining that it was just all white men. And so that's the backlash is getting. So like, This is like the equivalent of somebody doing like a historical film. Like for example, when Django came out, right? Yeah. And then people were like, I can't believe they were saying the N word. It's like, <laughs> this is a movie about slavery, dude. Yeah, no shit. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Or they would get mad when um, it would be about, like, I don't know, it's like getting mad at Braveheart that there was only Scottish people in there. It's yeah. like, what the fuck are you talking about? So it's, okay, it's like this. Like, um, The Last Samurai, mm-hmm. right? It's about Ken Watanabe, but then they confuse it for The Last Samurai being Tom Cruise. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, the way they marketed it with Tom Cruise on the posters and it says The Last Samurai, you think that Tom Cruise is The Last Samurai. Yeah. But what it's really about is, is how America broke Japan's 200 year isolation Mm. and they forced them to start trading, Mm -hmm. right? And to open their borders and their docks, right? And America did that so they could trade weapons and America modernized Japan. They gave him a fucking fast forward. That's why in the first scene, they didn't know how to use the guns and they got obliterated by the samurai until the end of the movie, right? Now, I didn't see that and be like, why weren't there any Koreans? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because America modernizing Japan is what caused the annexation of Korea. Mm-hmm. Not once did I even think about, oh, well, where are the Koreans and what they did with those guns and whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, that's what happened historically. But that's not what the fucking movie's about. Yeah, and this is like a problem with sometimes when representation gets out of hand, right? It's like mm-hmm. you want to be represented everywhere, even where it doesn't make sense. And I don't want to be represented in those spaces, right? Yeah. I want to be represented in, in the parts where it makes sense. So if the, if this, like, well, I'm trying to understand, maybe I'm missing something, but do people literally, so what, you just wanted there to be a scene where there's a Japanese person going, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a funny, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what, do you, what did you want? <laughs> just, yeah, that's what people are expecting. I'm like, what? It's, 
I, did you not learn about the Manhattan Project in, in school? I mean, like, there are some legitimate gripes, I'll be honest, like the fact that they actually took land away from natives mm. of, in New Mexico and Los Alamos, Los Alamos to, to do the project. And then how a lot of native people got exposed to radiation. They, they could have probably brought that part in, but that's also- I think that makes sense. Yeah, but that, that's a legitimate gripe. But they're literally just saying that there's no Japanese people. But where? Where? Why? Okay, maybe in internment camps, but were there internment camps in Los Alamos? No, the whole movie is in Oppenheimer's perspective, right? Mm. Um, no spoilers, but um, if you see it in the trailer too, there's some black and white scenes and then there's color scenes, right? And the color scenes are Oppenheimer's perspective. And anytime it goes out of his perspective is when it goes black and white. Mm. Right. So that was an artistic choice for it, you know. And so it's clearly showing it's about this one man, you know. But then even one, this one tweet it says, people seem to love Oppenheimer, but I'll just say it. I was uncomfy watching yet another movie about tortured white male genius when the victims of atrocities glossed over by the script. Like, what the fuck? First, Oppenheimer's Jewish. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but it's like, you're uncom it makes you uncomfortable to watch white people on screen. Like, like I said, people have problems with reverse racism, the term of it. But to me, just looking at that straight up, like, there's something wrong with you. But what's the point of that? of that commentary though. Like, I don't understand what the point okay. of the commentary is. So I was curious about this person, right? Her name is Lee Lai. Um, she is the head of this um, review page, a website for movies, but they only grade TV and films on diversity, not on the script, not on the compositions and, and, and the, what the DPs work, not on the editing, not on the directing, not on the acting. It's on diversity. And then you know what? They are actually, their scores actually get affected into the Rotten Tomato fucking consensus. Oh, you must be a Shang-Chi lover for sure. That, isn't that fucking crazy? <laughs> That's so fucking dumb. So they, there was a World War I movie that they reviewed and it got an F. Because there was fucking, no Asians? Because there's... There was no other different races. It was just white people. And then the-, the How's that not a parody account? The, yeah. The subline of it is, is it time that we can start casting people of color in historical films like World War I? Historical people? Historical. What are you talking about? So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to fucking dismiss this entire like- Dude, Let me media. tell you something. As an Asian person, if I was watching Knights of the Round Table- and I saw a Korean guy as one of the knights, <laughs> I'd be pretty upset. I'm yeah. like, that doesn't even fucking make sense at all. No fucking way. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. And so we've said this before, like, I don't want to see Asian people in Lord of the Rings either. Yeah, right? and, I don't, and also too, by the way, like I don't want to see a white person in like a like a Korean historical film yeah. either. Where just a white person comes out, he's like, Chana. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to want to see that shit. Like this, that was a problem with like uh, Marco Polo. Like for me, it was such an awesome show, but it's shot in the perspective of Marco Polo, mm -hmm. the white guy, but it's about Genghis, Genghis Khan, Khan. Yeah. You know, and I think that's probably why like it didn't do so well because it says Marco Polo. Who wants to see that? But if it said Genghis, Genghis Khan, yeah, I think that would have been a lot more interesting. For dude, they sure. spent so much money on that shit, yeah. dude. Like, I, I love that first season. It was supposed to be the Asian Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. I yeah. fucking loved it. I thought it was amazing. It was awesome. Like, the way how, like, you saw so many different historical Asian cultures under one banner because that's what Genghis Khan did, mm -hmm. right? You would never see that today. Yeah. But it was like he forced them into, like, just being a unified empire. You know, for, so... Just to go back on that marketing topic too, when we were watching like, uh, oh wait, did you have another comment on, that you wanted to read? Um, there was another one where they were saying how no women come and speak. Okay, fun fact, no women speak until 20 minutes into Oppenheimer. And then within a minute, there's a sex scene. 
Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Mint Mobile, my friends. If you're like me and you deal drugs, you need another phone. Just kidding, I don't do that. But I have a great phone that I use and I use it with Mint Mobile because Mint Mobile makes me very happy. And I like the fact that it's just $15 a month. And I'm talking about unlimited talk, text, and data for just 15 bucks a month. Did I say 15 bucks a month? How many times can I say 15 bucks a month? That is absolutely nothing. That's two drinks at Starbucks per month for you to be able to talk to your friends, uh, chit chat away with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever or whatever you, uh, I don't know, identify with. Your, your, your bears and your furries. I don't care. The point is that I have a reliable, reliable wireless service that I can use so I could chit chat my problems away. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, my friends, you gotta go to Mint Mobile and get the plan shipped to your door for free so you don't have to go anywhere. Mint Mobile is here to rescue with premium wireless plans for once again, just $15 a month. Ditch big wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get premium premium wireless service for just $15 a month. So once again, to get your new unlimited wireless plan for $15 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash genius15. That's mintmobile.com slash genius Genius 15, cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash genius 15. Genius brain listeners, my lovely genius farts, have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for their reco? You know, a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel super comfortable. And finally, after weeks of searching, you find the one. So you call their office and they have an appointment available. Heck yeah, but then the receptionist tells you this perfect doctor doesn't take your insurance. Well, wipe your freaking stupid tears away, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. Listen, Genius Brain has been sponsored by ZocDoc for quite a while because I love ZocDoc. ZocDoc is the best, my friend. Friends, don't listen to your buddies out there who are saying like, listen, I know why you have the wart on the underside of your penis. I've had that for years. This is your solution. They don't know jack nothing. You got to go to ZocDoc and find a professional that knows why you have bumps on your penis. I am bump free now because ZocDoc has been there for me. You listen to all these health obsessed folks, but when was the last time you went to an actual good doctor? Well, that's a guess what? If you have to think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc. There are thousands of top rated doctors on ZocDoc. They're all listed with verified patient reviews so you can find and book a doctor who not only has years of experience and an actual medical degree, but also gets you my Friends, go to ZocDoc.com slash genius and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash genius. ZocDoc.com slash genius. Look, the thing about film is too, like you can create your art however the fuck that you want, mm-hmm. right? Nobody ever talks about that, right? You can create it however the fuck that you want. We as an audience have, have an ability to watch it or not. Yeah. That's the thing. You don't have to fucking watch it at all. But you the, literally don't. These people that are advocating that people don't go and watch it <laughs> because of white people. It's I like, just, come I just on, get guys. tired of this type of stuff too. Like, I, I think I like speaking up for things when it counts and it matters, right? When people who do this type of stuff, you actually don't do anything for us at all because it's like the, you know, the classic fable, you know, the, the boy who cried wolf. Mm-hmm. Like you keep calling bullshit on things that aren't bullshit. People just aren't gonna care anymore. We just look like a bunch of whiny ass people. Yeah. So it, it's like, yeah, when the stop Asian hate thing was happening, right? You, you saw people who were elders who were getting beat up. Yeah, those are things that we should speak up on, right? Yeah. If it was a film, you know, where obviously Asian people can fit in, then yeah, let's 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 ask for a little bit more representation, right? Yeah. If it's a bunch of kids in a school in Los Angeles and everybody's white, yeah. that doesn't fucking make <laughs> yeah. sense. You better put some Mexican people in there, some Asian yeah. people, all this other stuff, right? Those type of things make sense, especially where I want to be represented, mm-hmm. or like in Asian stories, or even just in daily life stuff. But when you talk about something that's like like a semi autobiographical, right? What do you what are you trying to change here? You're trying to change history just because you wanted to suit your idea of what representation is, that's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, We can be represented in a lot of places where it makes sense. It's not just for your idea of what, of, of what you know, fairness is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get it. So it's, it's really fucking up the way, what it was before when everyone was like, yeah, let's watch both. Now you're seeing this split. And like, once again, though, it's the internet. You're gonna hear the extremities of both sides being the loudest voices. Yeah, And I just, just Great for tell you guys, though, huh? yeah. Great for sales, huh? Just ignore that shit. Watch both, okay? Like, I'm gonna go watch Barbie tomorrow, you know? And then, like, and else we can talk about it, you know? But 
Is, don't just not watch it because white people. That's fucking, to me, that's racist. Like the amount of marketing that went into Barbie to me is unreal because like I've, I've seen people, like they set up this whole stand where you get to be yeah. a Barbie doll. That's fucking unreal. Yeah. I wonder why they push Barbie so hard. Because Oppenheimer. <laughs> that's so fucking crazy. Oppenheimer's marketing is just the, the just trailers in the, yeah. the film, right? And because of the, the writers and actor strikes, the, the actors can't even promote the film now. Oh, that's right. So it's all word of mouth. It's all Twitter they're, they're, they're waiting on. But like, I think I mentioned before, like Barbie had like $150 million budget as a film. And then they spent another $150 million on marketing. That's fucking unreal, dude. Yeah. Did you see they built a home in Malibu that was just all pink too? That's crazy. They have pop-ups in Santa Monica and these spots of like Barbie's this house. This was some petty-ass shit. Yeah. There's so much Barbie like marketing. And so it's like, you know, then go watch it if you like it. You know, get into it if, if that was your life. If you what is Barbie. the reason why Ben Shapiro doesn't like the Barbie thing? I He's mean, it's always something about some woke shit, obviously. It's just like a feminist agenda and then all the men are dumb, you know, and, and antagonistic and whatever. But from what I'm hearing, because I haven't seen it yet, was that it's literally the Lego movie for Barbie. Where it's just the uni Barbie universe, you know? So from what I heard, it's a meta modern commentary. So I'm excited to watch it because it's one of those genre films, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's bringing Barbie into the real world from her uh, mindset and her manufacturing purpose, you can see. Kind of like Toy Story. Yeah. And But when they experience like what the real world is world is like Barbie has like an existential crisis, mm, mm, you know? Mm, so mm. I'm curious. I'd love to see that. Shit. Yeah. Now, you know, that's, that's interesting to me because before, do you remember the Brady Bunch movie? I Vaguely. So it was about the nineties, right? But this family from the seventies living in the nineties, but like everyone else around them, like they're, it's LA they're they're in modern times and they just see them as peculiar and they, they just kind of accept them into society kind of thing. And then the Brady Bunch family just still behave the way they are and they're always the same yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now in this day and age, it's like if you were to make a Brady Bunch movie, people coming from the 70s now, it was like part of the script would have to be them going through an existential crisis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, I mean, in any case, I'm I'm really interested in seeing Barbie, but it was a straight turnoff for me to just hear people like just shit on both movies from both sides. It's like it it takes the taste out of my mouth because who are you hearing from? Barbie fans shitting on Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer fans shitting on Barbie, and it's like let's cut that shit out. <laughs> well, I wonder if how much how many of them actually watched it too. Right, right. That's another thing, like. It's hard to get tickets to these. These are selling out really hard. Like for Barbie, um, they're playing like at the Grove every 15 minutes. Damn. They're playing in multiple, multiple screens. So you're not going to miss it. But if you want to watch Oppenheimer and IMAX, you can't get tickets until like the second week of August, the third week of August. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's how far ahead of it is. Especially if you want to watch 70 millimeter. So I watched 70 millimeter Thursday morning. <laughs> Damn, like, I'm yeah, probably gonna have to watch to this movie it. in a month. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. It's I didn't realize how I, it was sold out like that. Mm -hmm. It's sold out. If you try to find a 70 millimeter screening, IMAX screening, it, good luck. Dude, the, the whole like writer strike thing, we were talking about it on uh, Dudes Behind the Foods a little bit, but I haven't really been looking into anything lately mm -hmm. because I've been so busy doing my own, all this other bullshit. But <laughs> the writer strike is so fascinating because I just found out on the previous podcast where it's like literally childhood petty shit mm -hmm. of them cutting down trees around like, right. was, Robin, was it universal? It's universal. Yeah, Universal trimmed all the trees where the picketers were going to stand right before the hottest week that of is the summer. That is the most childish shit I've ever heard in my fucking life from adults. Oh, they got in trouble. Right, because the it's city of the city. LA, yeah. <laughs> like you can't just chop down fucking public property like that. It's not supposed to be like that. If you're a fan of legal advice on Reddit, tree laws is the shit. Really? People have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for cutting down a tree illegally. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, so the city of LA are, are going after Universal for that. I, I only know that because uh, even in Sacramento, like there's like 
thousand year old trees or some shit like mm -hmm. that. You can't just fucking chop yeah. it up because it's fucking up your property. You have to yeah. go through the city and they get an approval to get it trimmed or something else like that. Mm -hmm. And if not, it's like a ridiculous fucking fine. Yeah, there was, there was a story in Washington because there's like a bunch of millionaires up in this neighborhood. Some guy, because he lived on a lake, his, his view was being blocked by these trees. So he just cut them all down, right? And then there was massive complaints like you can't just fucking cut down trees, but he just paid the fine. <laughs> he didn't yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for these trees. There's so many people out there right now that are that are picketing. Like yeah. I kind of want to do it because there's a lot of celebrities that I really want enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to walk up to like Kevin from the office and be like, mm -hmm. Solidarity, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the actor's strike is happening now too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you part of SAG? No, I was no? never part. Okay. I never made enough money to be a part of SAG. Right. So the actor's strike is happening now. They're in solidarity with the writers as well. Um, so they're not allowed to market any of the films. They're not allowed to talk about the movies they're in. And they're not allowed to speak on it on social media at all. They can't do interviews on it. You can't go on a podcast to talk about it. There was, um, yeah, the, the, the verbiage that they're using is pretty cruel, right? Because mm -hmm. they literally are willing to shout actors to the point where they're like, well, you just won't make money and you'll just be fucking homeless. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Which is so odd that you would publicly put that out. Yeah. That's a very, very fucking inhumane statement to put out. Why yeah. would you do that? Like, like what's the point? How's that going like, to help you? They literally are quoted saying like, we have to wait for these people to start losing their homes. So they'll start giving in. One executive actually said that. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, these people have to like starve. So there's actually um, a fund, like a SAG fund. It's separate from SAG. So it's a 503 nonprofit. The millionaire actors are, are donating to that to help the actors who are in need. Dwayne Johnson gave a seven figure donation. Damn. To that. Yeah. That's so, crazy. So big props to The Rock, you know, for doing that. But Tom Cruise's ass, because like, I saw Mission Impossible 2. Uh, I mean, well, it's part seven, part one. <laughs> and that was an amazing film. I loved it, right? But the week after, Oppenheimer and Bob Barbie comes out. And so I think he was banking on doing his own marketing to get people to still watch it. So first he tried to take away IMAX screens for Oppenheimer. And they were like, no way. There's no way we're going to. You know, your digitally shot film is not going to supersede an IMAX yeah. film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And so that he failed in that. Then the the actor strike happened, so now none of the actors can promote the film. And he asked the the, um, the union if he could, if they could keep promoting his film, That's like make so an exception funny, for him. Funny, dude. And they were like, "Get in fucking line." Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not letting him. That's that so crazy, like. I think from an outside perspective for people who don't listen, I'm not saying is to go as far as like, Oh, you should pity actors or whatever. whatnot, Cause it's an art, right? And anything yeah. that you pursue in art, um, you kind of do it for the love of the art. And if you're just doing it for the paycheck, it's going to be a rough ride. Right. But at the same time, people still have to be able to live and survive. Yeah. Right. And I think the issue is we're not talking about the people who suck and don't book at all. We're talking about people who do book consistently and they're still struggling like a motherfucker. And they're legitimate stars. Yeah. And they win Emmys. Yeah. But they get paid peanuts. Yeah. Despite the Emmy Awards. Dude, Um, what's it? I guess uh, Squid Game, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a Korean production, right? But apparently Netflix owns all of the characters, the likeness, not likeness, but like the the whole IP of it, you know? So I guess the the director and writer got like maybe a few hundred thousand dollars, but the Squid Game itself grossed hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars for Netflix. So they own all the merchandising and all of that too. See, and the Korean the guys, thing. the people, those guys get nothing. See, this is the thing, right? This is the part that's unfair. And I know for a lot of people, they're thinking, well, that's $100,000. But you got to think about it to the equivalent that, so for example, Squid Game, right? What does Squid Game do? It wasn't just this small film project that did well. Squid Game actually brought a lot of people to Netflix. Yeah. Like a shit ton, right? Yeah. And it actually started this huge wave of them acquiring more Korean things because it brought a huge following to them. Mm -hmm. So they made a shit ton of money off of that. And there's no residuals for this. 
So for those of you out there who don't know what residuals are, it's just basically money that you get on the back end for depending on the success of where something shows. Yeah. So when it was uh, previous to streaming, it was ad revenue, right? So you get, so wherever they sell the TV, whether it's like in, I don't know, Finland, Switzerland or whatever what else, right? It shows and there, there's fucking commercials behind it. And then there's money from that. Yeah. Then you will get a residual and a cut percentage from that. But those days are over. Exactly. Yeah. So now it's like a completely, what, what people are trying to figure out is a restructure, right? Um, this is just on the actor side. So it's like, okay, um, I do Netflix and I get, let's say a, a shitty check. We do a whole season. I get fucking $50,000 and that's supposed to last me how long, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically in Los Angeles, that doesn't fucking last you anything. Yeah. You get $50,000. Taxes take half of that. So you're left with like 25, 30. Okay. So now you're left with $25,000, $30,000. That doesn't cover your rent for the year. That doesn't even cover my rent, right? Doesn't yeah. cover car insurance, whatever else. And then you have to go ahead and book another job, which you may or may not get. Now that's a part of the risk that you take when you go into any type of art, right? Just because you start painting, it doesn't mean you're gonna start selling $10,000 paintings, yeah. right? I completely understand that. But what I, what I think the argument behind that now is that, okay, this show is now a success. It has brought you hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, shouldn't you take care of me, right? Because- let's say you're going to do a second or third season. <laughs> I got to pay my fucking bills. Yeah. Right. And so in the meantime, let's say even this side, you get locked out because now you have to prep for the show. So you can't make another paycheck doing another acting gig. Yeah. So what the fuck are you supposed to do? So the problem, well, I'm going to not the problem, but I guess, but all these streaming sites do not give out their streaming numbers at all. You go on YouTube. It says how many views it has. Nobody has any clue what any of these shows actually see, like how many eyeballs are, are seeing it, unless they're using marketing. Like I think they'd say, oh, 500 you know, million individual accounts watch Squid Game. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. You know, for that, you know, like, damn, it's a lot of fucking, that's billions. Yeah. You know, and they're giving them nothing yeah. for it. Because it's not even to the position of like, oh, okay, well, we put up the money, we did all this, so we should, this, to the victor goes the spoils, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, these people literally wrote and created the whole concept. Like, it's everything. Without them, this is literally, it would not happen at all. And I, you know, compensate them fairly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a hundred thousand fucking dollars, right? For a show that brought in hundreds of millions yeah. is not anywhere near fair. Yeah. Right? That doesn't make any fucking sense to me at all. So like, that's the whole problem right now. It's like, well, now we have to talk about restructures. It's like either pay me big up, bigger up front, right? Or within the contract, let's talk about some residuals for the money that you will bring in for new subscribers or whatever else that it is. Something has to give, right? And I like for me as an actor too, let's say if I came in and they're like, okay, there's no residuals, but you get a bigger up front. Cool. Give me that then. Yeah. I'll take that. I don't give a fuck. Dude, these executives make 20 to 40, 50 million a year. Crazy. That's that's more than a list actors. Yeah, you know, and they don't ha do anything with you know the production of it. They just make sure that the shareholders are happy, mm -hmm. right? Um, so th that's another problem that's going on is that you know these people are asking for the minimum. Let us live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not buy another yacht? Yeah. You know, with a super mega yacht, you could have paid for like hundreds of people to just live a regular life. Yeah. You know, and they, and these actors and these writers can't. Yeah. So now what are they doing? They're trying to go to AI to have AI writers. And then they're trying, there's another thing that is in a lot of people's um, contracts that they didn't see. They'll take background actors and take them to this truck, right? Right. And they do a 3D scan of them so they can just keep start putting them in all these different no movies payment, and no, nothing. no for they nothing own their likeness. for life for life that's fucking extortionary dude yeah but here's another person actually asked chat gpt they asked what would you do better writing a movie or being a ceo of a movie studio and chat gpt said being a movie studio executive is what i'm better suited for than that's being cr being creative and writing a script of course, like, and also too, um, I think there's a big misconception of what chat GPT is, right? So chat GPT, it, they call it AI, right? Yeah. It's not really AI at this point. Not really, right? yeah. It's a conglomeration of just data that's all in the internet 
and it's condensed into an answer that you like. And it's constantly learning. Exactly. So it's not giving you an answer that's relatively true or false, right? Because it doesn't have that capacity yet. Mm-hmm. So it just it just compiles of what's currently out there. So if something is consistently false, it'll just regurgitate that as well. Yeah. So it's basically a super search engine mm-hmm. is what it is. Mm-hmm. And so when people, for example, like you could tell ChatGPT and give the, all these parameters for a script. And I think, I forgot, I watched something where somebody did that. It was like a trash. Yes, yeah, trash. It was so fucking yeah. bad. There's like, there's like a ChatGPT Seinfeld. That's so funny. Because there's, it's, it gave him all of the scripts and just like follow this formula. Mm-hmm. And then, so it comes up with these really <laughs> weird fucked up Seinfeld episodes, you know, but it's not really Seinfeld. Like you can tell it's not written by Larry David or Seinfeld. It's like, um, like if you ever got into ChatGPT, they have like the app on the phone now, mm. right? And then you could type in a parameter for it. Like I wrote um, uh, Goku from Dragon Ball Z eating a slice of pepperoni pizza inside a pizza parlor, right? <laughs> And this fucking demon was drawn. It was disgusting. Oh, like Mid Journey. That, yeah, I think that's another program. Yeah, yeah Mid Journey. And I was like, what the fuck yeah. is this? This is not very good at all. I mean, th- it's learning though. Like if you see Mid Journey now, mm-hmm. it's pretty insane. And it's uh, that's another thing. Like they're stealing artists' work. Yeah, yeah. So now a lot of illustrators, especially comic book illustrators, they're in trouble because now Marvel Comics can just go to Mid Journey and tell they don't, you don't need the illustrator. You don't need an inker. You don't need a colorist. Yeah. It just the, will it. develop the, the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's scary. You know, like um, there was this Korean artist, I forget, he just draws from just straight freehand and he creates these crazy Kim Jong-gi. Mm. Yeah. He recently died, I think. Yes. A yes, year yes, ago. yes yeah. Yes. And then immediately some asshole took all his work and then started re- recreating it and making new artwork from it. And it's like, hey man, let people die. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Let people move on, you know? And so that's another fucked up part of what's going on with AI. It's, it is, take, but the studio executives see that as a plus. And so they're fucking foaming at the mouth waiting for a real AI. Well, this is, mouth. this is what the world is kind of coming to, right? Like now we're, we're going to start having this conversation about what is art, right? Because art is very much appreciated because it's a skill set that a lot of people do not have, mm-hmm. right? So th- it, it kind of has this value to it because I can't do that, right? No matter how hard I try, I can't do that. What a lot of like AI technology, social media specifically like TikTok, Vine or whatever, it allowed for people who are talentless and, <laughs> and I'm not saying this as an insult, right? Yeah. Some people just aren't talented, yeah. but you're good at other things. But in, ter- in the art space. So non-artsy people can now fake the funk about being an art, artsy person, mm-hmm. right? And they they get they want that glory that they've never been able to have. Yeah. And so a lot of people are okay with art theft because it's like, <sighs> if I speak up about it, then I can't do this either. Yeah. So like, for example, you'll have people who um, steal online content all the time. Like it's it never struck anybody as fucking weird that you can create original script idea comedies or whatever. And then the next thing you know, Somebody on TikTok takes your joke. And they get oh, millions and millions of Even more than your joke. Yeah. Right? But you're the originator of this joke, but nobody gives a fuck. And even when they find out that it's copy or, or bitten off, they like it and they copy it themselves. Yeah. And they're completely okay with it because they don't have the ability to make original content. So they want to be a part of this thing called talented and artistic people without having to work for it. Sheen. Sheen. Sheen with Blogilates. Blogilates. Let's talk Cassie. about that. Yeah. So our friend Cassie Ho, one of my favorite, favorite creators of all fucking time. I love Cassie Hill. Super kind, super sweet, um, and just an amazing designer. Like a lot of the stuff that she creates for her uh, clothing brand in, in the fitness space called Pop Flex. Yeah. Um, it, it solves a lot of problems that people have with traditional sportswear or activewear yeah. that a lot of brands just do anyways because it's a set standard, right? You have blanks, you use it, and you create it, and nobody creates solutions for these issues that a lot of women have with their clothing. Mm-hmm. Cassie, being somebody who traditionally is from um, clothing, yeah, right. She designs her own stuff, listens to what her followers ask for. Anti-camel toe. Anti-camel, genius as fuck, yeah. right? Does all this stuff and she and it takes time and effort. And Sheen, these fucking trash bag, fast fashion fucking companies, comes in, takes her fucking idea, and does it cheaper mm-hmm. and worse. But people don't give a fuck about quality. They yeah. just want the cheaper product. Yeah. And they steal from her. And they don't give a fuck. 
So recently she put up another post where she had a conversation with uh, these people in position and sheen, right? In, in power and Like the president. Like the president, sheen. yeah. Right? And the reason why he they took down the original stuff that they stole, they already did it once before, was because his daughter was like a huge fan of Cassie. It's like, what the fuck? How could you do this to one of my favorite people on earth? Yeah. Takes it down. And basically like within their conversation, they were kind of alluding to the fact that, oh, we're just doing you a favor, but we actually don't have to take this down. Dude, you doing, that's so fucking condescending. I, could you imagine? Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, we'll take it down, but we're just doing this because it's, you know, we're doing this as a favor for you, not because it's wrong. It's what they're alluding to. Oh my to. God. So they basically steal her shit, all of her hard work. And she's a smaller company, right? She makes good money, of course, but it's still a small person company. It's like 20 people on staff. Yeah. And they're just trying to obliterate. The, and these fat, I fucking hate fast fashion like Sheen. Yeah. Like when you buy stuff from things like Sheen or um, what's the other one? Forever. Like Forever 20, whatever, these companies, right? They literally steal from fucking small companies yeah. all the fucking time. And H&M they create, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, they create garbage shit. It's literally fucking garbage. You buy their stuff once and it's done within a fucking week. I know because I bought them. <laughs> <laughs> all right? It's cheap. Yeah, I bought H&M stuff and I'm, I wear it. It feels like garbage. It feels like shit. It falls I apart. I wash it twice and it falls apart and it's done. Yeah. And so these companies are taking out people who really work hard on their shit. And then you're comparing. It's like, well, how come your stuff isn't, you know, 13 bucks? It's like you pay for what you get. That's yeah. why. Like, do you think that when you wear your button up and then after you wash it once, seven of the button pop up, pops yeah. off? It wasn't made in a sweatshop. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So like. This stuff happens all the time. People are stealing and it's okay. Yeah. And, and I hate it. Dude, have you seen when people buy shit from like H&M or The Gap and then when they, they open it on the tag, there's a note that says, please help. I am held against my yeah, will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that kind of shit. They'll find it in their pockets, like a note. And they're like, that's well, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. a one of a kind art yeah. piece. I thought it was fucking hilarious because Jason Chen commented on Blogilates post about that Shane thing. And I'm like, why are you mad, dude? Your whole social media feed is the sheen <laughs> of social media, dude. You are the sheen of social media, man. <laughs> we always give shit to this. Whole, well, oh, I, he's not very self-aware at yeah. all. So I can't believe they would steal. It's like, Jason, you dude, literally steal everything. You steal everything, man. You stole my shit. <laughs> That's literally what I commented back on that. If you can find it, it's like, I said, why the fuck are you mad? You stole my shit. <laughs> and then other people are like evidence or get the fuck out. And I'm like, I'm not going to respond to that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like evidence or get the fuck out. What are you talking about? Yeah. Dude? But um, that's the weird thing, right? Like I, I definitely understand this, this writer strike a lot more because this is what the society that we live in now. Nobody, art is losing its value every fucking day day yeah. right and we see it a lot I, just watch any shitty sitcom in the 90s right that you thought was shitty mm -hmm. and then watch the sitcoms now there's the acting is infinitely better <laughs> it's crazy yeah like the, the lines and the writing is still bad mm -hmm. but they deliver it way better yeah it's cr like i watched i got super high and watched dawson's creek <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> yeah i was watching dawson's creek and the premise of the show is fucking ridiculous, yeah. right? But the one thing that I know, even the way they speak is ridiculous. But one thing that I notice is that all those actors on that show are really good at delivering bad lines. Mm. And it blew my fucking mind. Mm. I'm like, oh shit. Like these people were just a level above a lot of the actors now. Mm -hmm. The, the you know, this I wouldn't call them casual actors, right? But sitcom actors, right? Not to say that they're not going to do anything outside of it. Yeah. But watch shows like Friends or even the original cast of that 70s show. Did right. you watch the reboot? There's like that 90s show or whatever. I haven't seen it yet. No. Well, terrible. It's trash. Yeah. Nobody's talking about it. The actors on there, they might be really sweet people. And look, I'm not saying about you as an individual, but you as an actor have to understand you're going to be compared to the original sitcom show, mm -hmm. right? Which still stands till this day. They're, they were just infinitely better at acting and delivering corny lines. Dude, have you seen when someone took out the laugh track to the Big Bang Theory? No, bad. just to prove that the Big Bang Theory is ass. That's so funny. <laughs> they, they, some audio engineer took out the laugh track. And so it's so awkward and weird when people give a joke and there's silence and they have to wait till the laughter dies down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's no laughing. So the pacing of it is so weird. 
So I, I maybe it's another thing these days. Like it's harder for us to accept sitcoms with a live audience mm -hmm. that way, unless it's something like Saturday Night Live. You know, like maybe the sitcom format doesn't work anymore with a live audience than you know other like just comedic TV shows. Dude, like it's an example of me. To me, it's an ex example of me. It's an example to me when I see um, when I go to modern art museums. Mm -hmm. Ninety percent of that shit is bullshit to me. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Like. If you if you've gone to like the Louvre or you've seen like historical art, there's like skill involved in this yeah. shit. Like the way they shade, the way they like shape lighting, all this other stuff. Just because you put fancy words to things doesn't mean it's better. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like I went to art school and I took these humanities and art appreciation classes, and literally eighty percent of the time, I'm like, this is bullshit. It's bullshit. But the teacher's argument is because you feel that way says it's art. And I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and you teach art because you couldn't do it, bitch. Yeah. That's why. Like that guy who ran up. Did you see the guy that runs up and he jumped on a trampoline and he just threw a line on the wall? Oh, hell no. And then everybody's sitting there watching him. <laughs> God. He runs, jumps on a trampoline, grabs a pencil, and he just grazes the pencil across the wall. And just says. And makes like this loop. Art. And that's art. <laughs> Like you have got to fucking be kidding me, man. I There was this person uh, online that was on Twitter got mad at me because he's like a fashion person. I saw that. And I was like, what? Because you were talking about the, what's that? It the was the Met Gala. Met Gala. Right? And then all I said was like somebody, this guy was going off. Like, how can people not appreciate this, right? It's like, they look stupid. <laughs> I was like, it's an opinion. It yeah. just looks stupid to them. And I remember his clap back at you was you sound like a guy who wears t-shirts and shorts yeah, and, yeah. I wrote, and i wrote back i was like that's the majority of the world yeah right so people are going to have it it's like it's not that deep people are allowed to think that this shit's stupid as shit right and they're like well i'm in fashion cool that's your niche people don't have to agree with it you fucking weirdo are you gonna walk down in in the middle of the street wearing a fucking apple on your head with a yeah. fucking with two nipple tassels like it's it's odd. Like what percentage of the clothes that are made for the Met Gala actually comes down to the everyday consumer? Exactly. Like 0.01% of whatever the fuck they're wearing. Exactly. Who and the fuck is going to dress up like a cat? It's fucking elitism. Yeah. Right? So people who aren't a part of that group are going to look at it like it's fucking weird. What are you defending here? Are you defending the fact that it's like, oh, this looks amazing? No, it does not. Yeah. I'm okay to say it doesn't. You can think that that's perfectly fine. But for you to be upset that somebody doesn't like your art is fucking weird. Just because you are in fashion school, you fucking tard. That guy that you're talking about, I recently saw a tweet from him. It, just, it came up on my feed. It's actually fucking hilarious because he said he went through therapy because he had this feeling that everybody in the world hated him. It's right? true. <laughs> it's you know thing. that? It's actually true. You don't need therapy for that. It's actually a fact. So- he said he came out of it with like learning to love himself. And then as soon as he was done, someone from a huge publication wrote an article about him, how everybody hates him. <laughs> I'm like, that's genuinely funny though, the way he posted it. <laughs> that's so, everybody hates me. Maybe because you're an ass. Yeah. Right. Like if people in your personal circle think you're a fucking ass, I mean the online, online community is whatever. Right. But if in general people think you're an ass in your own space, you're probably mm. a fucking ass. Like I can understand that I can be a movie snob sometimes. Right. Like I have to catch myself when I'm like, what you haven't seen it. And yeah. I have to be like hey, cool out to myself. Right. If you can't handle that yourself, then you sh you deserve to get fucking shit on. That's so you know? funny. It was such a weird thing. It's like, well, here's, you look like somebody who just wear t-shirts. It's like, yes, that's yes. what normal people wear. You don't like wearing t-shirts? Yeah. What you, <laughs> the fool just walks around like with a, a fucking pheasant on his chest every day. You fucking weirdo. Shut the fuck up. An ass. It's yeah. just, I don't know. That whole elitism thing bothers me a lot. I mean, I've been going through this whole thing where uh, one of the reasons why it's been, it, it's been taking me so long to move is because uh, I've been on my memory condo tip right now. Yeah. You know, throwing a lot of the stuff that doesn't spark joy. <laughs> right. And I've kind of like come to, it's like this weird thing of coming to terms with how, and I've already done this before, but now it's becoming even more solidified in my life where material possessions to me are really starting to mean absolutely fucking nothing. Yeah. Unless it has a function for me. Mm -hmm. And I really see it. And I think what kind of helped me come even closer to this ideal that I've already been doing now is being in LA where every time I talk to somebody who I don't know that that has an assumption of who I am and the space and the circle that I'm in, they either talk about money 
what they have or what they do. Yeah. And I literally could give a fucking fuck less. And what kind of car they drive. Right. Because they see like I own a matcha franchise or whatever, whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. and they, immediately they talk about, it's like, oh, this is what I do. Didn't fucking care. I don't care to know. I don't even know your fucking name. <gasps> what kind of Rolex do you got? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, you're bottom though, right? It's like, oh, where's, you know, you don't fucking, like you, you should buy a Rolly or, or they, no, they'll say some shit like that. I'm, I'm making a random example, but it'll be something like that. And I'm just like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. What are you talking about? Is this what, you're going to die just like I am. Do you not realize this? All the stuff that you fucking buy, all these things that bring you temporary happiness, which if it makes you happy, that's fine. But you can't base my happiness on the things that you buy. Yeah. Which is a very weird concept to me. And I keep running into this thing specifically here in this fucking city. Yeah. Dude, I just had this conversation with my Uber driver. Oh, really? He's like, yeah, are you from LA? And I just said, no, I was just like here and there from Washington, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I He's Armenian, so he's like, I don't like LA people. Mm -hmm. They're so, uh, they're so, and I just said, fake? He's like, yes, yeah. fake. And I was like, superficial? Yes, superficial. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, other people, like transplants, I guess you could say, can, can read that shit. It's like, it's a weird culture of like what I got and what I do and how people have to convince you how important they are. Yeah. And, and I, even when they do, I'm like, I kind of still don't give a fuck. Dude, I had a fucking lecture somebody recently because they kept ending their statement with this. I know what I mean by lecture. I'm not saying like from a position of I'm better than this person, but I've known this person long enough where I, I just got fucking sick of it. And they kept saying this phrase that was getting on my last nerves. And it was, I'm doing this, 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 but I don't, I'm, but I'm not like you though. But I'm not like you. Kept saying it over and over and over. And I finally fucking just snapped. And once again, this is, like, I'm, I'm, it's hot as fuck. I don't mm. want to deal with any of this shit. So I look at him. I was like, why do you keep saying that shit at the end of your sentences? And, you know, like, it's getting awkward in the room. He's like, oh, what do you mean? Like, I'm just saying, like, I'm not like Hollywood like you. I was like, why do you keep ending that fucking sentence? I was like, you are literally the dumbest fucking person in this room. And then, you know, people are cracking up, right? I was like, let me tell you why you're fucking dumb, right? I'm like, you keep saying that fucking phrase is because you think that when you say that, you're trying to minimize how you actually feel. Like you feel like you're not doing enough. Nobody gives a fuck about what you do in this room. Yeah. Right. We're all just trying to chill here. And every time you bring that shit up, it's fucking annoying. <laughs> that is like your go-to phrase. But I'm not like you though. Right. So throughout oh, the God. dinner as we're talking, <laughs> right. <laughs> so this fool orders whatever his dish is. Right. And then I order my dish. Right. It was like a chicken parm. I was like, let me get the chicken parm. But I'm not like him, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just kept saying it Marcella. throughout the whole dinner, throughout the whole yeah. thing. He's all right. I get it. And I was like, no, you don't get it. You got to fucking black mirror them. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, you see how fucking annoying it is? Cut that fucking shit out, dude. I was like, nobody gives a fuck. You're on this like dick measuring competition. And I was like, yeah. I understand you're five foot fucking three. You got a Napoleon complex. Now shut the fuck up. Yeah. So I, like, I just got so fucking annoyed. Comparison, I forgot what the quote was, like it will steal you of your creativity and your joy. Yeah. Like comparing yourself to others, you know? Like I, I did a lot of that, I think in my early 20s and whatnot. I mean, I fast tracked out of it um, through going on missions, getting actually living off of nothing. Um, where to this day, actually, I, I got a PS5 mm -hmm. a few months ago. I haven't touched it in two months. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for having it in a sense, but through my therapy, I have to learn, hey, you deserve this yeah, and yeah. it's okay, it's fine. If someone had all the, that stuff and they enjoyed it because whether it brought yeah. meaning or joy or a sense of reward get for it. what they do, get it, enjoy it, love it, you know? And th that's a positive way to look at it. But if you're looking at, oh, I only have the, you know, BMW 428, this guy has an M4, it's like, the, who the fuck cares? Yeah, and like this guy specifically lives his life comparing what he has to somebody else. So whenever he gets something new, he has to mention he has something new, mm. right? <laughs> it, it, it's just so annoying. And by the way, when I call certain people out, I'm very, very careful, right? Because it's clearly something that everybody agrees with in the room, but nobody is saying it. So like, <laughs> I just refuse to, like, look, time is limited. I don't want to come out to dinner and be uncomfortable this whole time because this fucking person doesn't understand. He's yeah. making it awkward for everybody. Yeah. And by the way, certain people in that room didn't, don't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So for him to constantly bring up money, could you imagine what that makes the other person feel? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, read the fucking room, you idiot. Like, what the, what the fuck are you talking Somebody about? Somebody who has to say how much they paid in taxes. 
they're expecting you to do the calculation by 20% exactly. how much money they made. It's like, feel bad for me, but I'm, what I'm really saying is I make a lot of money. And yeah. by the way, this person didn't make a lot of money maybe like five or six years ago. And recently he you know, got a really good job a few years back. And so now he's enjoying the fact that he's making money, but he's doing it by comparing himself to other people and making people feel bad that they're not making enough money. I mean, he probably saw it as a race. Like, hey, I caught up to you guys. Exactly. Right. And it's, it's like, like caught up to what? Yeah. None of us at this table spoke about money ever. We came out, we drink, we enjoy. We're in each other's presence. That's perfectly fine. And every time he came in after he got that new job, he would tell, oh God, man, work is so hard. Like, you know, like when you got to fucking deal with all these stupid idiots, it's like, we oh. all, we all work. Yeah, we all work and <laughs> nobody gives a fuck, bro. Yeah. But he wants to do that so he could feel fucking important. And now from what I heard from the, uh, from this like small group of people, it's like, dude, he doesn't say that anymore. Cause, Cause it's like, and you, and I told him too, I was like, you know, you guys are also partially at fault. You keep letting him get away with you this You enabled stuff. it. Yeah. Or you keep inviting him when you don't like him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? Stop inviting him out or tell him to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Cause it sucks for me too. When I always have to be that person. It's like, right. they're like, dude, there was a, a phrase that people used to say in college when I was in Riverside. They said that I want to get a band that says, what would David do? Of the, what would you? <laughs> Cause like a lot of people don't have the boldness or yeah. the guts to and like speak I said, up and I'm say I'm not doing shit. this every fucking time. It's actually not that frequent. It's I, I'm very selective about things. It's like, I only do that when, if I have a, a, a just beef with one individual person in the group, mm -hmm. I don't say shit because that's be between me and that person. Yeah. If everybody agrees and they get annoyed, and this is what I don't like, is when we hang out in a group and when that person comes and after the person leaves, they start talking shit about them. Yeah. You invited him. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody told you to invite this guy. And that's, that is, that must be an LA culture thing. Like, like he's part of the, the, the fucking scene or whatever. Right. And it's like, but they're annoying as fuck. Yeah. It just, and it, and it makes me upset at the other people too. It's like, you, you, you guys might actually be worse because you, they think he thinks that you're good friends, but you don't like him and you keep inviting him out. So you might be worse than him. At mm. least he's oblivious and he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you guys keep inviting him. Yeah. Don't invite him. Make it a lot easier. Cause you're worried about his feelings. What's worse? He gets to think that he has good friends and he walks away and then all you guys start talking shit about him to me. And you start griping about him to me. Yeah. It's like, why, why do you do this? Just fucking nip it in the bud and then he'll change that behavior if he wants to stay friends. I'll tell you what, me growing up too, I know I was a shithead and I look back at like all the leaders and mentors in my life who didn't say anything and I had to learn the hard way. I got kind of resentful. Like, <laughs> why'd you say something? Yeah. If you motherfuckers knew, why don't you say something? It's kind of like when being fat, like, why didn't anyone tell me I was fat? <laughs> yeah. You know, I look myself I in the mirror like and thought I was okay. People are sometimes worried about individual feelings, which is very kind, actually. I, I appreciate that a lot. But when it becomes a problem to the point where like you're inviting this poison in into this group simply because you don't want to hurt their feelings, even though they're destroying the mood and making everybody else feel bad, that's absolutely pointless. Yeah. And it's, it's actually fake as fuck. Like just say how you feel because at the appropriate time. Yeah. Keep it real. Keep it real. And it'll help the group dynamic so much. Right. Cause look at that. They like, oh yeah, he's a lot more chill now. Cause now he's a little, he's self-conscious. Yeah. He's aware that he has these weird fucking habits and he makes people feel bad. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my snapping point at that point was the fact that he keeps talking about money for people who don't make that type of money. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, for example, he did this one thing out of multiple things that I just talked about that was actually piling on was when we were ordering food, he goes, just order whatever, like who cares what it costs, right? And it's like, we know what you're doing here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're saying that you make a lot of money. And you know, so somebody else is just ordering whatever. It's like, oh, why are you ordering that? Don't you want this instead? It's like, bro. Oh my God. Bro. Cause it's fucking like $80 for the fucking steak. It's fucking expensive as shit, yeah. right? And I know this person doesn't make that much money right? Because I know what they do for a living. And so they're not going to fucking order that. Mm -hmm. you're not, it's not like you're offering to pay for the whole meal for the table. You're just making this person feel fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. So now it, in my position, it's like, these people are my friends. I'm going to do to you what you're doing to everybody else. Especially when it comes to food though. It's yeah. like, I'm going to eat what I want to eat. Like it, if I want a fucking Denny spaghetti, don't fucking judge me for not getting the grand slam. Yeah. Right. I mean, I got Judge, you were there when we went to uh, a champong jeep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got the beef champong because you know mm -hmm. I can't have seafood. Yeah. You know? 
And that person looked me in the eye and was like, what are you, a fucking idiot? Because I got the beef jampong. I'm an idiot. It's on the menu. It's on the menu. Why would they offer it? Also, too, there are different variations of like jampong too. You know yeah. what I mean? And like different variations of food. It's like you can't eat it, whatever. Fuck it. So it's like jampong is seafood and they have a beef o- option. Thank God. So I can eat with my friends. Yeah. God. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Like I, I think like for a lot of people too, it's probably a habit that could probably developed like in high school. Like when you're into the, like these four social situations where you have to be around somebody because they're just a part of the group. Mm. But when you become an adult, you don't have to kick it with anybody. Yeah. You really don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then it's like, it's stunted mental growth, right? It's a st- stunted maturity. Yeah. It's and this like, motherfucker too has to go to a lot of therapy to figure out why he feels that he's always less than somebody to the point where he has to push somebody down to make himself feel better. Right. Right. Like that's, I just, don't tolerate that shit because that's like a weird form of bullying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like I said, read the fucking room, guy. What are you going to do? I almost can't wait to see this motherfucker again because <laughs> he already knows I'm going to rip into him again. Yeah. Nonstop. And the funny thing is like when we were eating dinner, by the way, oh, I'm going to tell all the fucking details. You know, he tries to roast me back and it's like, uh oh, then it fucking sparked. Boom. I'm like, yeah. it's on. That's why I just kept ripping into him throughout the whole dinner, mm-hmm. right? Till he was quiet and he was shut the fuck up, right? And also too, he didn't apologize to the other people at the table right. for any of that shit, right? Making people feel fucking uncomfortable. It's just odd. I don't like that type of stuff. And if you're out there too and you want to call people out on their bullshit, there's obviously a nicer way to do it than I did it, mm-hmm. right? But I just got sick of it because it's been a long time. I yeah. probably could have taken him aside and said like, hey, you shouldn't do this. But once again, I'm assessing what this person's behaviors are. If I would have done that to this person, he would have got defensive immediately, would have called me fucking sensitive, right? right? That I'm just joking around. So the best way that I deal with people like that who aren't self-aware is I make them feel how they make other people feel. Public shaming works sometimes, (laughs) It fucking works, dude. And he ain't doing it again, is he? Motherfucker. I have half a mind to say your name on this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, a lot of the the one-on-ones won't work because it becomes a battle between you two. Yeah. But when they can see that the group, the collective, agrees, then yeah, then they can either take the next step to be completely delusional or just accept the facts. Yeah, and sometimes too, like this doesn't work out. Like I remember um, in college, when I was in um, community college, I I spoke to somebody who was uh, kind of being an asshole. uh, And some people looked at me like I was being combative, even though they agreed he was an asshole because I was disturbing the fucking peace. So you do have to take these risks, right? But I, I had to stay true to myself. Mm. Right. And obviously after this whole situation, some people pause like, yeah, I agree with you. It's just like, you know, some people are super sensitive. It's not easy confronting somebody. Mm. It's actually very fucking difficult. And yeah. I get nervous before I do it. But sometimes I just can't take that shit and I have to say something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain podcast. Um, you can catch Genius Brain every Sunday at 12 p.m. And uh, you can catch Ed at Ed Park VP. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.